Hi, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video, I'm going to be configuring OSPF virtual links. Um, I'm also going to be showing you guys an alternative to using virtual links if you're given a task uh, to connect, say, for instance, um, in this case, what we're going to do is connect uh, area 6 to area 0 uh, through area 23. Um, but we're not going to be using virtual links. We're going to be using another method, which is uh, GRE tunnels. Uh, to establish that connection from area 6 to area 0. Uh, above from uh, area 0 to area 5 what we're going to be using is virtual link in that case we're going to hop over router 4 to uh, area 14 we're going to be, ho be hopping over that area to get to <coughs> area 0. So one thing here real fast I'm gonna change these area IDs kinda of misleading we'll put this area 145 because it has router 5 router 4 and router 1 in it also down here we're going to change this area ID to uh, area 236 again in OSPF Remember, every area that you create has to connect to area zero, uh, with some exceptions, which, you know, in comes in virtual links and GRE tunnels. So we're going to look at those two exceptions. Um, also, real fast here to point out, um, in this scenario, I have created uh, loopback interfaces, uh, loopback zero interfaces on every router in this uh, diagram. Uh, for instance, router 1 is going to be 1.1.1.1 with a slash 32 host mask. Uh, router 6 is going to be 6.6.6.6 slash 32. So we're going to be using those um, loopbacks in some cases. Uh, so hang with me here. Um, what I have already done is I've already created you know, the network topology only thing I have to do is go into area 5 and area 6 and you know create those loopbacks. I haven't created the loopbacks yet. I haven't even run uh, started OSPF yet so we're going to start from scratch uh, on router 1. What I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and enable OSPF process 1. Uh, we're going to be running it for let's go to do show What we're going to do here is we're going to put its FA00 interface. Uh, I guess one last thing we should do here is show you guys the layout of the network IDs or the subnet masks. <coughs> the router 1 and 2 are in uh, subnet 12. Uh, they compose of, they make up area 0, the backbone. Um, area 236 <coughs> consists of router three and router two being in network 23 and also router six and three being in network 36 uh, that's area 236 <coughs> excuse me uh, router four uh, and one uh, make up network 14 and that's going to be in area 145 also router four and five make up network 45 which is part of area 145 and then again, area 5 over here on the side is loopback 55 on router 5, and it's got this 55.5.5.5 slash 24 network. And area 6 on router 6 is loopback 66 address. Uh, I'm sorry, interface is going to have the address of 66.6.6.6 uh, slash .6 .6 .6 24. So try to say that three times fast. Um, anyway, back to the config. What we're going to do is go in here, router 1. We're going to set up area 0 first. Uh, we're just going to put the interface uh, fast Ethernet 00 in area 0. So we're going to use the network command 192.168.12.0. Okay, uh, we're going to use the slash 24. So anything that's in the 12 network, anything on this router that's falls within the 12 uh, slash 24 subnet mask is going to be trying to advertise itself into area zero.
which is going to make it easy. You can also do, you know, more specific, like a host mask on this, so that you're only going to advertise the 12.1. You can make it, you know, uh, network 192.168.12.1.0.0.0.0. But let's just keep it simple here, and uh, we're not going to run into any problems uh, this way. So we're going to use that network, put it in area zero. Um, as you can see here, we have a fast unit at 0, 1 on router 1, and that is going to uh, router 4. So again, we're going to advertise that network is 192.168.14.0, and again, slash 24, and remember that area is 145. Let's just look at our diagram again. Yeah, area 145, and that's it for router 1. Uh, let's go on the other side of the OSPF area 0 which is router 2 and we'll go ahead and do a do show IP interface brief just to get our bearings on the IP addresses uh, here we're going to do router OSPF 1 network is going to be 192.168.12.0.0.0.255 again this is area 0 and you should see the neighbor come up instantaneously Okay, there you go, have a neighbor relationship. <clears throat> and what we're going to do now is we're going to go to, we're going to first, I guess we can verify the neighbor. You show IP OSPF neighbor. See here my neighbor ID is 1.1.1.1, which is router 1's highest IP address. Again, um, something to point out here real fast is how OSPF, you know, um, processes the neighbor ID, or I'm sorry, the process ID of the router. If we do a show IP OSPF 1, which is process 1, you see here on router 2, we have the routing process has the ID of 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2. um, what we need to do is hard code this router ID in OSPF because if we're making virtual links what what you guys will learn later is that virtual links you use um, you know we can use the router ID of the router to establish the virtual link so uh, what happens is if we don't hard code that router ID uh, say we add another 